killed a bug right when I slammed on the brakes. I'm sorry, bug. Hi, people of the interwebs. It's your favorite abandoned warehouse, Sarah here, with another car review. And today, I have a giant GTI. I mean, seriously, this thing is like a giant GTI. It is a 2020 Volkswagen Atlas Cross Sport SE 2.0 with tech package and it's front wheel drive. It's a huge title. If you're confused on the difference between the Atlas and the Atlas Cross Sport, don't worry, you're not alone. I was too. And the biggest difference is this one is crossed with sports, whereas the regular Atlas is not that athletic. I appreciate the fact that Volkswagen makes these LED headlights standard on all models of the Atlas Cross Sport, regardless if you get the base model or the top spec. This thing has hella nice headlights. Hella, the headlight is manufactured by Hella. It was a joke. I just noticed that the IQ light emblem on the side illuminates. It's a very muscular, almost square body Chevy front end. You see it, somebody out there sees it. It's just, it's square. Please, somebody, am I not alone on this? I think it reminds me of a square body Chevy. Not at all, does it? Damn it. I'm happy that Volkswagen isn't following the trend of having two-tone gunmetal or black machined face wheels like every other crossover on the market. This all silver wheel looks good against this not Nardo gray. It's actually called pure gray because it's a Volkswagen. I doubt this was intentional, but it does kind of look like there is an R in the shape of this LED taillight element, which would look really good if this was the R-Line edition. What is going on back here? They're not even trying to make a fake exhaust tip. They just put like an eyebrow of chrome plastic and pretend it's an exhaust. It's a crossover, might as well show the part that matters. Look at the size of it back here. This is absolutely massive. And if you fold these seats down, I'm kind of blown away at how much space is in the back of this Atlas Cross. I mean, this is a large vehicle when you see it in person, so you'd expect that. And in photos and video, it probably doesn't seem like this thing's really that big, but it is. And here's the problem with that. I personally think Volkswagen already has enough crossovers and SUVs in their model lineup. I would have much rather seen them bring a pickup truck to the US market than another crossover. Let me know in that comment section below, what do you guys think? As far as the interior goes, for those of you that are new, the way I try to do my car reviews is I don't sit here and read off a brochure to you because anybody can Google specs and data for a car. What I'm gonna do is give you my physical observations from what it feels like to actually sit inside this thing. What's not easy is showing you how well a seat bolt steers, which there's no point in doing because there is no sport to these seats. I love the white stitching that's on them with the black perforations, but especially these rear seats. This is the first vehicle that the back seat is prettier than the front seat. It really, it's a pretty back seat. Wait a minute. Oh yeah. Wow, that reclines a ton. This does have the tech package, which means you get this really pretty infotainment system. You can always say call followed by a contact or select artist. Uh, no. Nine, zero, what next? Uh, why are you doing this? It's classy looking and clean and it does have fruit and robot compatibility, which every car in the year 2020 should have now. I like the sound that it makes when you tap next. It sounds like a Snapple bottle. It's cute. There's an ample amount of USB charge ports throughout the vehicle two USBs down there and oh what it's got a power inverter <gasps> this thing's got a 115 volt power inverter in it too and it has a little wireless charging cubby underneath the digital climate control I thought this was kind of funny when you turn the digital climate control off it uses the F for Fahrenheit is part of the word off so it kind of looks like it says of <laughs> Uh, the little anime character looks like it's gonna eat my knees. The center of the steering wheel, whoops, I beeped, is really tiny and it's flat bottom, but they lacked the feature of paddle shifters for the eight speed automatic transmission. There is the option to moving this thing over into sport and then you can move it down and up like a sequential gearbox, but let's be real, who actually uses that? Everyone wants paddle shifters. What is weird though is this little storage tray up on top of the dashboard. 
I don't know what you'd want to store on top of a dashboard because as soon as you give it hell, that's going to come flying off and maim someone in the back seat. I don't know what else to say back here, so I'm going to go back up front now. Okay, bye. I'm kind of torn on how this review is going to play out. I was going to do an off-road review, but this thing's front-wheel drive, so it's kind of pointless. But you know what's not pointless? Listening to this exhaust clip. I wonder if I can use a remote start from inside the car. Nope. You can hear the turbo spool up a little bit from inside the cabin and I don't think that's a fake sound generator. Gauges in here are very Volkswagen. There is this little O.0 reset button they put for the odometer in Volkswagens. That's cute. The conspiracy about a giant GTI continues. It's very typical Volkswagen gauge cluster in here. There's some menus that you can go through, check out all the safety features. It's chock full of them. One thing I did notice yesterday when it was raining out though, when you put this thing in reverse and you turn on your windshield wipers, it automatically enables the rear wiper for you. That is smart. In the name of science, I shall now give it the beans. I'm gonna slap this thing over into sport mode. I'm gonna leave it in auto though, I'm not gonna shift. And to disable traction control, there's no physical button to do that. You actually have to go into your infotainment screen and go into the settings menu. And then under ESC, you go to ASR off and that disables ASR. Keep in mind, it's 101 degrees outside, so it's probably a little heat soaked. Ready? Go. Hesitation. Oh, and there's the torque. It's got good torque shove once it gets going. third gear shift feels like kind of a big drop it doesn't really stay up in the boost but okay that's good enough this thing it's weird it's quick but the gearing in second to third kind of is like oh it's a wobbly hood oh that's light wow that's a, there's so much room in there hello welcome to garage science with sarah because this is the SE trim of the 2020 Volkswagen Atlas Cross Sport, it is powered by a 2-liter turbocharged EA888 four-cylinder that produces 235 horsepower at 4,500 RPM and 258 pound-feet of torque at 1,600 RPM. What's even more special, though, is the optional engine for this thing is a 3.6-liter VR6, which is one of my favorite sounding six-cylinder engines in existence. They sound so good. Time for the braking test. See what this giant capybara will do. Now I'm behind me. Ooh. Ooh. I killed a bug right when I slammed on the brakes. I'm sorry, bug. I mean, they're, they're average. The average brakes. Hi, I'm back. The drivetrain in here, as I mentioned before, is front wheel drive. Underneath this air box that is the same size nearly as the cylinder head is an Iason 8-speed automatic transmission. Which I thought that was weird. I had an Iason gearbox in here. I was expecting maybe the ZF 8-speed, but then again, this is a transversely mounted front wheel drive layout. Hence why the optional 4-motion system is Haldex based. This is kind of like the GTI your grandparents didn't know they asked for. I mean, it's got the power plant kind of ish out of a GTI. I don't understand the purpose of a front wheel drive crossover, especially something with this kind of ground clearance. I mean, if you're gonna buy a vehicle like this, it just makes sense to get one that has all wheel drive, which they offer. <laughs> this thing's actually kind of fun though to chuck into a corner because I don't think the engineers ever designed this vehicle to do this kind of stuff. It just goes to show you can have fun in anything. 
I mean, it's got a good power plant in it. It's got good torque. This thing is like trying to control a melting ice cube in a hot pan right now, though. Oh, how you do this corner? Oh. Hot mess. Not bad. Look, this is a performance car centered YouTube channel. So if you're watching this as an average consumer and wondering why the hell I'm doing this, this vehicle isn't designed for what I'm doing, you're absolutely right. And this is the kind of stuff that most people wonder. Can you hoon a back road in an Atlas Cross Sport two-wheel drive? And yes, you can, and it's actually still kind of fun. <laughs> To me, a front wheel drive crossover is basically an appliance. It is a minivan for people that don't want to be seen driving a minivan. And there's nothing wrong with that. If this is the type of vehicle you need in your life, you have to haul around people or groceries or dogs, and you don't live in a place that snows, you don't really care about going off road or performance, then I get it. Would a wagon make sense as well? Yeah. Wagons are pretty dope too, and I wish they sold more in the US. I don't know why people aren't a fan of them. Maybe because they don't sit high enough. But there's a lot of people that need vehicles like this. And it's interesting to get to drive something that's not the top spec version of a vehicle. A lot of the press cars I get are usually that. Would I buy a front wheel drive one of these? No. It definitely will get better fuel economy than the four motion all wheel drive. But to me, it just makes sense. If you're gonna get a crossover, it's a utilitarian type of vehicle. Get one that has all wheel drive. So if you guys have never seen one of my car reviews before, I have multiple categories to rate and assess vehicles. Starting with the coveted Weep Weep score. I mean, Bean score. That bird's distracting me. <laughs> it is a rating of one to five beans based on the feeling you get in your guts when you give it the beans. And this Volkswagen Atlas Cross Sport is getting a rating of one point Two, five beans. It's getting a little bit above a bean because this thing is actually pretty quick. I was surprised how peppy it is. Lots of low end torque. It makes it kind of fun to drive. And it acts like a GTI because it's only front wheel drive. Next up is the cookie category. It is a rating of one to five cookies based on what you get for what you spend. It's an assessment of value. And this Atlas Cross Sport SE is getting a rating of 2.5 cookies. I think it's average for what the price is and what you get. What I do like about this though, is it kind of sits upscale in its appearance. It doesn't just look like a cheap crossover, which it's not a cheap crossover. It's almost $40,000, but it just kind of looks classy. And I like that. Lastly is the penguin score. It is a rating of one to five penguins based on how much I personally like a vehicle and I'm going to be giving the Atlas Cross a rating of 2.5 penguins. It's average. However, if this was four motion equipped, it would be much higher than that. I really like this Atlas Cross. I just thought it was gonna be an appliance type vehicle, but it's not. There's something here to this vehicle. And I can only imagine how good the R line with four motion and the VR6 in it would be, or even the 2.0 turbo with four motion. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this review and I will see you soon with another. Bye. Weep weep. 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 Weep weep.